the UFC just made two really weird and odd matchups that I don't think make any sense to pretty much anyone, and I don't really understand it, but they're actually more competitive than you think, guys. It's actually... It's closer than what you're thinking, what the first instinct is. You might think, oh, they're throwing Nate to the wolves. Literally, boars. Ha. They're showing Sugar Shane no mercy. Yeah, I did it again. Was good. <laughs> and yeah, I understand those first thoughts. And yes, I could be biased, at least for the Sugar Shane fight. Because yeah, I have to close by me. But I'm not, I'm not the normal Sugar Sean fanboy. Trust me, I've been around. I've been watching MMA for a long, long time. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll earn that subscription. Watch this whole video. I've got a great breakdown for you guys. So it was not really leaked. ESPN News put out both these fights, and Sean O'Malley actually like went on DC and RC to announce it, which was kind of funny because he's been beefing with Daniel Cormier, so it was kind of funny. But anyways, yes, both these fights, Nate Diaz, Hamza Chamayev, Sean O'Malley, Peter Yan, are taking place, and the guys they're fighting are either next up or already considered the best in their respected divisions. I mean, Hamza Chamayev obviously is next up, Peter Yan, I mean, I believe he did lose that second fight. Uh, I also predicted him to lose that second fight. Just saying, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a Sugar Sean fanboy. I know I lost a lot of people when I said I'm a fan of his, but it's not like that. But anyways, pretty much everyone knows Nate's been, been heading towards the end of his contract. I mean, what, the guy pissed outside the UFC headquarters after asking to fight uh, Francis Ngannou. That takes some balls, man. And, I mean, you gotta love Nate Diaz. But, uh, yeah, they're throwing him to Hamza Chimaev. Everyone's saying it's gonna be just, like, getting sacrificed. Like, it's just gonna be a massacre. Like, it should, like, the weasel said it shouldn't even be allowed on TV. Or, like, it's gonna be a brutal beating. And I don't necessarily disagree. But, I, I think we need to think about, like, go back and look at when Hamza fought Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns is a crafty jiu-jitsu player. Uh, maybe not. He's, he's good off his back. Nate Diaz is one of the better guys off his back. He's very crafty off his back. He's, he's not underrated off his back. Burns, though, is overall amazing jujitsu. And we look at Nate Diaz versus Hamzat. Or, sorry, Gilbert versus Hamzat. That was a really close fight, and Hamzat gassed, man. Hamzat really did gas and showed a lot of things in his, a lot of weaknesses in his game, like a not great defense. He's had the he's had the opportunity to walk down guys that are low, lower level competition, but now he got to step up with Gilbert, with, with Dorino, and obviously Gilbert gave him a really tough fight, but Hamzat still took the win. And he was disappointed with the performance, but Nate Diaz is really tough, and he's got power. I mean, I don't know if it's not the traditional uh, crazy knockout one-shot power that Francis Ngannou has, uh, but he does have a lot of power behind him that carries on throughout the fight. This is a main event, five rounds, um, which is I'm really like happy for Nate Diaz. He's going to get a big bag hopefully on the way out. Not to say he hasn't made big bags before with the McGregor fights, but still also it's putting some shine on Hamzat in this main event, which I'm excited for. But anyway, <laughs> If we were to just look at what Hamzat showed in the Burns fight, and then look at what Nate's been able to do in his entire career in the UFC, yes, there's a massive size difference here. I mean, Hamzat's a guy that probably should be fighting 185, let's be honest. But still, let's look past the size difference. Nate Diaz is a 155, or like, let's be honest, not really. Actually, but still, rounds four and five, like, guys, Diaz could win those if he if he survives now i know he probably won't i doubt he's going to be able to survive i think this is going to be a passing the torch moment in a literal just or just a cracking of the chin moment if i do say so that's probably not the best way to word it but yeah i think personally i'm seeing Hamza not getting that done early why is the ufc doing it it's pretty simple build a name off nate diaz as he heads his way out especially if he's going to go fight jake paul it makes that fight not as exciting uh, no one really wants to see it if he gets mauled by the new kid on the block in the UFC. And the Petra Yan Sugar Shane fight, bro. What? What's the UFC doing? Like, I feel like they're really rushing Sean into this. This is not. I liked what Sean was doing, where he's building himself up. Like, think about it, guys. He's going from fighting unranked. Uh, he's a self-proclaimed can crusher going up against all these unranked guys, and then he just steps up. With Pedro Munoz, which is a good step up in competition. Holly and Pive is like 15. Uh, and then he takes on Pedro. He's 10. But the Pedro fight was really even. I do feel like Sean was starting to come on. But still, that was really even, man. It's not something you want to see if you're a fan of Sean O'Malley. Like, and it's just weird to me, right? Because I don't know what Sean O'Malley sees in this fight. 
I don't know how he sees this as a winnable bout. Now, Corey Sandhagen obviously is a guy that did fight Peter Yan recently, and Yan made it look easy. Like, the way he, he dropped, he has, that was one of the most beautiful fights to watch. Like, the way he dropped Sandhagen with that, what, with, I think it was a spinning back fist into a left hook. It was, it's one of my favorite shots of all time, or it was a left hook into a spinning back fist. The way he dropped Sandhagen there, one of my favorite moments of all time in MMA. Like, it's just the striking in that fight was so clean and crisp, but Peter showed that, yeah, he drops the first round, but he downloads that data, comes on, dominates, just shows no mercy. Second time I use that, I I don't know why I did that. And the Sean O'Malley fight, like Sean O'Malley's a guy that really relies on his range in his fights. Corey Sandhagen definitely relies on his range, but not as much as Sean. And Peter was able to easily negate that. And that's one of Sean's biggest weapons, his range. 5'11 at 135 is a different beast. It's a real hard thing to deal with. Not saying Sean's not a high level striker. It's a really intriguing matchup. But, I mean, Peter Yawn, like, I just never saw this fight ever happening, especially this early on in Sean's career. Like, this this is, the winner of this gets a title shot, most likely. I mean, Peter wins, maybe not if Aljo wins, but if TJ wins, Peter's definitely getting the title shot. But if Sean wins, man, that's crazy. Just crazy steps up in competition. It's too much too early on for Sean, though. Like, I know, I'm not trying to be a doubter, doubting the guy. I'm not trying to doubt the guy. But really, man, like, Peter is so amazing. He's such a great striker. He's such a fun guy to watch. He can negate the range. However, the fight does get slightly intriguing when we consider this one fact. The fight's three rounds. Yeah, it's not a five-round fight. It's a three-round fight. Three-round, third fight on the main card type deal, all right? So the first round is gonna most likely be more of a gimme round for Sean. Um, I mean, the way Peter downloads the data, if I'm Sean, I'm gonna stay very patient. It's gonna be a very boring first round. Or you put it on Peter, and you test the guy's chin, you throw out that spinning wheel kick that he could have knocked Pedro out with if he didn't go as high with it. Like, maybe he throws out some wild stuff, tries to finish it the first round. I'm just really intrigued by both these matchups guys like i feel like this video is not my normal video where it's scripted well thought out well put together at least a good amount of my videos are this one is more just off the dome not more off the dome just off the dome in general uh like, let me know if you like the style of video I i'm really just talking here like i feel like i said some stupid things um uh but yeah that's gonna pretty much do it for the video man yeah not much else to say i hope i earned your subscription but uh yeah, if I didn't, check out some of my other stuff, man. I got some real bangers on the channel coming out soon and already out. And, uh, yeah, let me know. Did Do you still think I'm a cringy Sugar Sean fanboy? Fair enough. Like, I, I got the guy's gloves back there. Let, let us be honest here. But in my defense, like, I don't really have a good defense. I thought they'd be collect like collector's items. I thought it'd be cool, but it's just... I, I took them out of the box. Why? Bro, I could've sold this for like 300 bucks if he beats Peter and goes for the title. <laughs> oh well. And then subscribe, like, all that jazz.